Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I'd like to welcome you to this introductory webinar from Future SME. Future SME is a transport, the Trans European Consortium supported by the European Union to develop a new business model for small organizations. Uh, my name is Dennis Carney, and I am the moderator for this session. Uh, I am a partner of Future SME, as are the two presenters today, Yimit Petici and Bill Dickey, who I will introduce to you shortly. The purpose of the session today is to present the Future SME Capability Diagnostic Model and provide an example of how it has been provided, applied in industry. Yumit will describe the model and Bill will provide a case study. We will have time at the end for questions and discussions. In terms of the webinar protocol, as attendees you are in listen mode only. However, if you wish to ask questions, uh, you can use the question box to submit queries at any time. I will consolidate any, any uh, questions you have and address them to Yumit or Bill uh, in the question and answer session at the end of the presentation. There is also a short survey uh, which I would like you to complete after you leave the webinar. If you also, if you'd like a copy of the presentation, please, may, please email to the address given at the end. I'm now going to ask you to respond to a poll. This is to get a feel for the type of audience we have today. Just bear with me a second that I put this up. Uh, this poll is asking you in what capacity are you participating in this webinar today. If you just fill in the, the one that, that describes you most clearly and give us some indication as to who we have today. That looks good. I reckon most people have filled in at this stage. I think we have a hundred percent now. So I'm just going to close the poll and uh, share the results with you. You can see that 50% of the people involved would be consultants or trainers and then roughly uh, half and half of the remainder are either academic or from, from uh, companies or players or managers. Uh, you might want to pick up on this when I show it to him. Now, I'm going to um, now introduce Yumit Petici to you, who is our first presenter. Uh, and Yumit is going to talk about the capability diagnostic. Now, I'm also going to ask you to, to complete a second poll uh, while I am talking through Yumit's uh, uh, background. And just bear with me a second. And Yumit will discuss this. It's a slightly more difficult one. Uh, you will discuss this when he starts his presentation. Uh, you is the director of the Strathclyde Institute for Operations Management, or SIOM, and he is also a professor of technology and enterprise management at the University of Strathclyde. His main area of expertise in, in, is in operations management. More specifically, he specializes in performance measurement and management in manufacturing service organizations. This encompasses areas such as strategy development and management, business process management, and supply chain management, as well as the use of technology in enhancing organizational performance. UMIT is the leader of the Future SME Consortium, uh, of which this is project is, is about. And this Future SME has developed a methodology which permits SMEs to develop their capabilities into the future. And it does this through a transformation process that guides them on that journey. Now, if, so I'll give you another few seconds to finish the, the, um, to finish the, uh, the poll, and, and we'll then, I'll then we'll hand you over to Umit. So I'm going to uh, close the poll now, and if you just look at it, you'll be able to see, see the results which says that it's a mixture of the two middle ones. Um,
44% saying they occasionally try to do something, uh, 22% sometimes informally, and, so, and actually there's 33% say they, they, they do it uh, all the time regularly. So, Yumit, I will hand it over to you now, and maybe perhaps you'd like to comment on those results. Okay, thank you, Dennis. Dennis, before I start, I just want to check that everybody's hearing me okay. Dennis, can you confirm that you're well, hearing well, I can hear you fine, yes. I can hear you fine, yes. Uh, uh, just, Dennis, we were getting out of background noise when you were talking, as if some sort of uh, pumping air or whatever, so just want to check your microphone, maybe. Okay, okay. Um, uh, Okay, uh, good, uh, good afternoon everyone. Uh, Imit Bittici is Dennis introduced from University of Strathclyde. Uh, have I got the controls, Dennis, so that I can put the slides up? Yes, you have the control. You have to con oh, sorry, I need to uh, hide the... Hide the um, this. Yes, you should have the controls now, Yumit. Right, I just want to make sure that everybody can see my slides before I start. They haven't come up yet, Yumit. It hasn't come up yet. Okay, I will start and let it, let it come up. Uh, there you are. Okay, it's there now. Is it, oh, yeah. Is it there now? Okay. Yeah, I think I, I, I should have pressed the button. Apologies for this. Okay. Uh, we want to talk about future proof um, uh, SMEs. And, and just imagine you are owner, managing director of a small manufacturing firm that you founded some 20 years ago as a traditional precision engineering subcontract to large engineering sectors. Yeah? Today, your company is well known for its innovative products and services. In fact, just last year, you have won the very prestigious award for changing the shape of your industry. And that award is based on your innovative cloud-based precision engineering service. Your customers want to work with you as they see you as a key business partner because they appreciate the innovative products and services you provide. You have been growing steadily over the years and have a healthy balance sheet and a profit and loss account, despite the general ec difficult economic conditions. Your facilities are clean, well-organized, simple visual information system that keeps everyone informed of what is happening, what is going right, what's going wrong, what are the key issues and priorities. In fact, it is seen as an example of and there's a continuous stream of requests for visits from various organizations, other com companies, competitors, even customers. You have a team of keen, motivated engineers and technicians whose, whose skills base span well beyond the traditional engineering, and they include electronics, software, and web engineering. There's a great, supportive, collegiate atmosphere in the place. Things just seem to happen with little management. People instinctively seem to know what to do next. And there's a queue of good people who want to work for your company. Now, I'm sure this was, a, uh, this was an uh, imaginary organization, uh, but I'm sure if you are looking for a job, you will, we will all want to work in an organization like this. Or we will, if we are owning our organization, we would all wish that our company was something like this. Yeah? In a way, what we've described here is an organization we started with traditional origins, but learned and grown and changed with the times and adapted to, 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 to with new technologies, etc. Now, I would encourage you to think about some companies that you may know. And uh, you will see on your screens a matrix, a two, simple 2 by 2 by 2 matrix, which I would like you to sort of think about the companies and try to place them into various boxes. In the vertical axis, what we have is this highly focused organizations. Uh, so as we go up, we get a very clear focus and we have business processes that delivering that objective, that value proposition, that focus efficiently and effectively. Uh, on the horizontal axis, we've got the ability to anticipate, innovate and change quickly, changing quicker than our competitors. So what we sometimes see is that the good companies, the companies we tend to see as good companies today, tend to fall into the time bomb element, the 
because what they're very, very focused. They've got very efficient processes, very effective processes that deliver that focus and that value for the and customers today. But because they are in rails, they sometimes find it very difficult to change quickly. On the other hand, we have the Jitterbug, which is a very entrepreneurial type driven type of SME who, who jumps from opportunity to opportunity, but they seem to lack focus. But the stars, the ones that sustain themselves and, this, they, 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 and, and, and succeed despite economic conditions are the stars, generally, who are, who've got a focused business model, they've got, they can deliver that efficient and effectively, but they can change it very quickly if they, and if and when they need to. We call them the adaptive organizations, the adaptive enterprises. If I, maybe for a few minutes, if I may be a bit academic about this, we tend to talk about the technical fitness of the organization. Otherwise, they've got a good business model and they've got their processes working like clockwork to deliver that business model. And then we talk about the evolutionary fitness. This is our ability to change, adapt into emerging circumstances, basically. Now, the question is, uh, still remaining theoretical about this, the question is, how do companies develop these capabilities? Now, we've done in the future SME project, we've done some background research and come to the conclusion that this is not anything new, that this is, comes from the management uh, literature. Uh, organizational capabilities are like sand cones. They, they are built upon each other and they support one another. So if you get the, 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 the lower layer of capability, in this case, the, the white layer of capability missing or wrong, the rest of it just collapses. So, so uh, we need to look at capabilities as a joint and a joined up integrated system. And, and the real insight is that these capabilities develop over time uh, as companies learn. And as you can see in this my vertical axis there, we, we sort of the first or the second layer of capability we've got there, the strategic capability. That's our ability to create a focused business model, then, uh, which is then underpinned by operational capability, which is the which is uh, our ability to organize our processes and our resources, deliver that efficiently and effectively, which is the technical fitness space. And then, once we are technically fit, uh, we can then develop our adaptive capabilities so that if, if, if and when we need to change, we can then move that. Move that. So that is pretty well understood. But what's becoming quite clear is that to make this all sustainable, uh, we need to develop manage, managerial capability or cultural fitness because that underpins sustainability. What we mean by managerial capability or cultural fitness is our ability to create open, empowering, motivating and engaging working environments where people actually uh, uh, get out of bed in the morning looking forward to come to work because they are working, they are working to a higher purpose. Now what we have done in Future SME project is uh, just to summarize here, Future SME is a, a large European RTD project. Uh, 8 million euros, 8 EU states, 29 partners, 19 of which were SMEs, uh, uh, running between 2009 and end of 2012, 1st of January 2013 actually. And our objective was to develop new manufacturing business models to improve competitiveness of European manufacturing SMEs. An early part of the research uh, said there's no, there's no single model we can build all we can prepare SMEs is to be adaptive. They need to be focused and have an efficient business processes to deliver that focused business model. But at the same time, we are able to change very quickly to, to, to leverage opportunities and to, to, to mitigate against any threats. So really what we have under, how do we create this capability, system of capabilities in the organization? So we create a process which is to, to keep, get people in the organization to think together, act together, and reflect together. And out of this process, they actually learn. And, and as what we have now tested and demonstrated is that as organizations go through this thinking together, acting together, and reflecting together process, 
they learn, as they learn, their capabilities go, as you've seen in the previous slide. Now, uh, one of the tools we developed to help companies to think together is the capability diagnostic, which really tests an organization's uh, level of maturity against those four capability areas we just discussed. So, managerial capability, strategic capability, operational capability, and adaptive capability. Uh, just show you a few screenshots. This is an online tool. You can go to Future SME. It is. You, you could go and try it. Uh, you go to Future SME. You register on it. Which is, there's, there's no cost of registering. Just so, uh, you need to provide some basic information, and you can have a go at taking this diagnostic. Uh, it asks you some simple questions that you need to ask answer. Uh, here is one of the questions: Why do your customers come to you instead of your, your competitors? Surprisingly, a number of companies find this question quite difficult to answer objectively. Uh, another question, I'll just give you some uh, samples of questions here. Um, uh, you will see also that, uh, oops, then it's my screen went black, is that, is everybody else looking? It's black here, you met as well, so, um, it, I think it's trying to load. Are you yeah. showing an, an application there or just a screenshot? I am. I'm, it's all completely blank. Uh, all right. It's trying to okay. refresh. Yeah. Um, let me just start my presentation from where I am again. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. Um, uh, you will see that uh, on the left hand of the screen you will see uh, nine, uh, a table with nine areas. So these are the sort of areas that we are asking questions about. Uh, uh, you complete the question, the, the, the diagnostic. The, from the diagnostic there is a fairly detailed report that gives you a footprint as you can see on the screen there and s some more specific uh, advice and recommendations uh, against each specific area. Uh, essentially, if you're on the green area in the footprint, you are, your capabilities are reasonably mature. Uh, the amber or area is, is intended to be for area of some improvements. If you're in the green space, then you have some critical, uh, critical area that needs urgent attention. Um, I'm not going to go through this capable diagnostic in great detail. It's there. You can go and play with it. Let's see. We've now applied this diagnostic and tested it with more than 50 uh, companies around, around Europe, uh, all the way from Turkey to, to Ireland and from Italy to Scandinavian countries, Sweden, Norway. And what is the value of it, you're going to say? Well, the first one is that it gives you a quick snapshot assessment of where your organization is against the best practice framework. It's, it sort of outlines the strengths and weaknesses from a capability perspective. Uh, more significant, however, it facilitates conversation around the subjects that management team rarely finds time to talk about. I noticed in your poll earlier on that only 33% of the respondents, and I was looking at the, also the, the profile of the respondents earlier on, there's some academics and consultants and there's some entrepreneurial managers, so like, it's, it's interesting to see how that profile compares to the response to that question. Only 33% of the respondents were actually uh, talking about these things in a formal environment and taking following up options on it. Uh, we find that a lot of SMEs are too busy uh, dealing with customer demands and, and they don't create the environment to actually have this conversation. And, and, uh, Having facilitated that conversation uh, about around these subjects, uh, what this creates is a common view and a shared understanding of the organization, its capabilities and development priorities. Because usually when people go and talk this through and uh, answer those questions, or a debate answers the questions, what's the right answer, what's the wrong answer, they come from different points and, and, and they, they share their views and come to a common view, and that is an important part of the management development activity in the organization. 
And more importantly, also facilitates learning. Uh, I'll give you one example. Uh, we've done this diagnostic with a company in the west of Scotland who considered themselves to be very innovative, and they scored low in the innovation area. So their initial reaction was, oh, this diagnostic is rubbish because we think we are very innovative and it's scored us low. So as a facilitator, we asked, so what makes you think you're innovative? And let's go and look at some of the questions you answered and how you answered them uh, and, 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 and you know, change your answers and see what, how do you need to change your answers to be, to be scored as highly innovative. And what turned out that although this company was reasonably innovative, they didn't have a process. They didn't see innovation as a process. They didn't have a process for managing innovation. So innovation was really happening by accident. Uh, since then, we've actually followed up and, and, and they've done, they're taking some actions to actually introduce the organization the innovation process. Yes. So you can see how this, this diagnostic is facilitating people to think together. Uh, act together and reflect from that and actually uh, learn something and take one step forward. Now, this is the end of my, my presentation. Uh, I'm now going to hand over to colleague Bill uh, Dickey so for him to uh, tell you about his experiences of doing the diagnostic. Before I do this, you can go to www.futuresne.eu and try that diagnostic yourself, get an experience of it. Just like the finish was saying that, although you can do the diagnostic yourself, we found that it works best when there's somebody who's first independent who's facilitating it, who understands the main model and purpose behind it. So, uh, and there are a number of us around around you so who can actually do that. So, uh, without further ado, I'm just going to hand it to Bill. Uh, can I can I pop in there a minute, uh, Yuma? Just to thank you very much for your presentation, and we have a couple of questions that I will put to you later on on that. So. Um, so, without further pause, there, I'd like to introduce Bill Dickey. Uh, Bill, as you can see, has a lot of whiskey around him and has, uh, has been involved in the whiskey sector for a, a large part of his working life. He's recently retired as the Operations Director at Houston, Houston Bottling and Copac, where he was the main driving force in turning the business around from a, uh, an operation, I suppose, that was declining to a certain extent into a growing business. Uh, through partnership with major global players in the drink sector. Uh, he previously was responsible prior to that for managing the global supply chain of allied distillers and has spent most of his life, working life in the, in the Scottish uh, whisky sector. So Bill, I hand it over to you. Right, thank you very much Dennis and good afternoon to, to everyone else. Um, that was a glowing introduction. Um, I'll not add to it to do and tarnish my reputation. We've been through the diagnostic process uh, three times uh, uh, on this cycle that Unit was explaining. So uh, it was a very practical experience for us and we went through it with four of us from business, uh, it's all the senior managers within the business, and it was supported and facilitated by uh, a person from the university. Who, who helped us do that. So it's the same process that, that Newman was describing in an academic sense there. Uh, we worked through a couple of versions of the diagnostic um, as the researchers found some difficulties with the model and refined the model. We were reviewing and updating visual strategy boards, uh, planning for growth completely outstanding projects, scope for new projects, and a weekly management meeting and within the business. Uh, we control the business by having a weekly management meeting, which is reviewing what has happened the previous week and looking at the future, see what's going to happen short term, medium term, and just reflecting on how the, what's going on in the business actually works out with the existing strategy. This was the result from the diagnostic process uh, through the first time in May 11 and the second time in February 12. So it had pointed at areas where we were able to improve. Um, we hadn't changed very much on strategy. 
uh, but definitely some improvement in other areas other than operations where it looks as if we've actually gone backwards, which was uh, quite uh, an interesting result for us because we thought we were improving over that period. When we looked into the results to see just why certain of them had come about, uh, within the operational area we had performance are scored very poorly in environmental issues and the environment, the environmental issues we felt were not all that significant a problem for us. Um, there are not uh, great environmental issues around the type of process we have. Clearly we make um, every effort we can we don't end up pouring whiskey down the drain which is potentially like the worst thing that can happen to us and lots of safeguards for doing that. But we don't generate huge amounts of waste material which need to be controlled. controlled. In the performance area, uh, we didn't do very well on the KPIs that we were using to measure the business performance. Uh, the managing director subsequently went to visit at uh, another company Highland Spring, which was organised by the university, and he learned a lot there, which he then came back from and started to implement in that business. And strategy, we had performed, had not improved over the period, and that came down to communications. Uh, we do not communicate the business strategy right down through every single level in the business. Uh, we communicate to the people who have to know, and there are certain other points within the business that we do communicate to other employees. Uh, so we are actually comfortable with what we are doing on communicating the strategy to the business. We then did a third version in August of this year, and we had improved in every area other than performance. And that can back to the same issues about certain KPIs that we're using. The model is telling us that we should be using something different or not. It's an area that we're constantly looking at, um, but we're still undecided just about what degree we need to go to uh, to modify our KPIs within the performance. So we're starting to feel more comfortable now with the results that are coming out of the diagnostic. The picture on the right shows uh, part of the what was called the strategy wall, and that is the output from the initial meeting that we had uh, with the university facilitator. And as we went through our strategy, developing our strategy, uh, we had started to identify projects. Uh, this, this whiteboard is kept in the room where we have the weekly management meeting so we can see everything that's on there uh, and it reminds us uh, just which items we should be checking progress against. I should probably say at this point that I used to write an annual strategy document and John was very proud of it. Um, and that made me feel that we were looking to the next three and five years and just the environment the business would be operating in, areas for growth and how we would bring that growth about. Um, but that was a lovely document which uh, was read a couple of times and then tucked away. Uh, so the contrast could be greater with the way we've done this now. Instead of having a document, we got all of the main information on a single whiteboard. And it's there, it's visible for all the senior management uh, to see. So it's an excellent tool for explaining aspects of the business to both customers, stakeholders and the reminder for the senior management. That's just another shot of the full board with all the different points upon it. Don't worry about trying to read it, my next slide is a lot clearer. So the outcomes from the diagnostic give us uh, a whole list of projects and what we found was it would be impossible to act on these projects. Like any other small business, we simply go for resources. So it's all about prioritizing the projects and then deciding to move on. We continue to use the visual strategy boards to support projects. 
measure against developer project plan, see how uh, what kind of progress we're making, and just keep on working our way through that transformation process and cycle. That's the whole thing tidied up. So in the middle here, we have the, the vision for the business. We want to be better than the rest in everything we do. Up here, the managing director came up with is everyone on the bus. He wants everyone within the business to be working together. They're on the bus, they know the direction the bus is going in, and they all get the part to play and they understand what the business is all about. We want to know what the gossip is within the industry. Uh, it's a relatively tight-knit industry with a small group of very big players within Scotland, but then a whole raft of medium or smaller players. And it's, we always need to scan the horizon so that we know what the gossip is within the industry, what's happening, what opportunities is that creating for us. And we put the names of some of the businesses here that we believe we identified these from our knowledge of the industry and businesses as customers who had potential for us either as new customers or somebody who was perhaps going to do something and get a threat to our business. Uh, just anything at all that was relevant to us within our business. We identified our goals, our customers, our processes, our actions. So all of the actions down here were things that we identified that needed to be done. And we set up projects to set about doing these. Change your improvements, change parts and new machines for new products, quality plan, refresh, stay fresh. It's all about cleaning up, tidying up, making the bottom facility much more attractive, um, a much better environment to work in. Uh, somewhere that when potential customers came, they would say they would be very comfortable having their products manufactured with us. Other areas that still need to look at, we're not using our ERP system to full extent, and that will become increasingly a bigger problem as your business grows, the number of customers grows, the number of products grows, and therefore the number of components start to mushroom. Uh, so it's really important to look at that one. Uh, we want to have a bottle library so that we can show customers all of the products that we have existing change parts for, which can be very important to a customer. Because if they want to launch a new product, then change parts for the bottling lines are one of the most expensive items. So if they can use an existing bottle, they would bypass that setup. Uh, we need to educate customers about consequences of certain things that they do uh, and the types of product they ask us to produce. Down here, I've identified our SWOT analysis. So these are all items that are very relevant to us and we can keep a watch on these just as we go through the process. What it all led to was Project Frontier. Uh, so we developed a strategy through to 2017. Within Project Frontier, we want to continue going for growth, um, pick up both organic and new customers. We need to develop people, the infrastructure storage. We want to build up to sue about 800,000 cases of production, have a million pounds profit. And these are the projects that we need to undertake. And we'll use S FSME tools to support this on that. Um, we're at the end of 2012 and we are well on the way to achieving these targets early prior to 2017. So we're quite comfortable at present time uh, in the progress the business is making, um, but there are big uh, investment projects underway on the infrastructure just at present time, which will set us up very well for 2013 and beyond. That is my last slide. Okay, 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 Bill. Thanks, thanks very much for that. Uh, that's a very interesting presentation, and I'm sure the audience. I'm hoping the audience got something out of it. Um, we have about we have about uh, five to ten minutes now for for uh, questions that, that people may have. And um, what I do, Bill, Bill, I, I just asked the first question to you that I've got here. 
and just get this right now. Um, the first question to you here, just to follow on from what you have there, was uh, I just combined two questions. Uh, what was the most valuable lessons for you in doing the capability assessment? And also, did you encounter any resistance from others in the organization in trying to do this? One of the best things that came out of it was the roundtable discussion uh, with the senior managers within the business. Um, that discussion was helped by having the facilitator from the university there. So the doing the capability assessment um, took us through a framework and to a much greater level of detail, which then had to be argued and justified on what our consensus. So we, we developed a consensus on each of the points. And what it meant was that rather than me writing a document asking everyone else to read it and say, do you agree or disagree, um, everything on that whiteboard was agreed in considerable detail with the senior management team. So the fact that we had that discussion was one of the greatest benefits to us. Very good, thank you. And uh, I suppose the, another question that's come up, and I don't know which one of you wants to answer this, maybe both of you, it's around facilitation, which uh, you mentioned as well, Umit, has been important. And I suppose really the question is, why is facilitation better or necessary? Well, uh, can I answer that one? First of all, Dennis. Yes. Um, we had a group of four senior employees in the business, all of whom, excuse me, all of whom had very long experience within the whiskey industry, but very limited experience from other industries. And if it had been left up to us, then perhaps our discussions would have been a bit too narrow. Having someone from the university who could help us, lead us, and say, well, have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? So. We had a relatively narrow basis, very, very deep of the Scotch whisky industry. Uh, and four of us sitting there thinking that amongst us all we knew everything there was to know about the industry. Uh, the facilitator could challenge us. Uh, I think the challenge is coming from the facilitator. We're very positive. If I could just add to that, yeah, uh, I, I think there's value in doing the diagnostic or self-assessment on a, without the facilitation, surely there is. But I think what Bill said, what's beyond the sort of, you're actually, what you're doing here is you're using a model. That behind the di any diagnostic, there's a model. And, uh, and if there is somebody in the room who understands in reasonable depth the, 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 what is behind the model, then I, that person can actually facilitate the discussion in the right direction. If, you know, if, you sort of, if you don't know what you don't know, then you can make some very naive judgments about where you are against certain questions. I think this is where the facilitators can come. One is this is challenge people, but also bring that knowledge of the model that underpins the depth of diagnostic or the self-assessment. I think that's why the, 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 the facilitator is quite important. Okay. So asking some of that difficult questions. Okay. Uh, uh, there's another question here around uh, accessing. How uh, could you describe in more detail how to access the facilitation? Oh, sorry, the um, the assessments. You must. You said it's through okay, the, web, yeah. the website somewhere. Yeah. Uh, well, you, you, simply you go into www.futuresme.eu. Yeah, and uh, you will see that there's actually two diagnostics there. One is a quick diagnostic, just to give you a quick taste of it. You can do it in 20 minutes, or probably less, 10 minutes, which gives you a position. Remember the, the matrix I've shown, two by two matrix I've shown with the problem child stars and time bomb and the uh, jitterbug. It actually positions your your organization according to your responses in that matrix. Uh, but it's, it's a it's sort of something quick and fun to do. But there's a detailed diagnostic, which usually takes about half an hour. And, and if you go to the web page, you can access the diagnostic. There's a button on the, on the menu to take the diagnostic. You can do the diagnostic. You can view the results on the screen, but you need to register to get the report. Yeah? But the registration is free at the moment, uh, and uh, it is, uh, you just need to supply your organization.
information in any email address from that email, and then we get the get the report. So really, it's as simple as accessing the, the diagnostic history www.thinkjuicing.eu. You can also contact us through that web portal if you want uh, a facilitation. Uh, we've got facilitators around various parts of Europe who've been involved in the project, so they can they can help. Okay, thanks, you much. I'll just take one more question, you and again, it's for you, and probably not so much to do with the with the topic today. It's more about a general report around research. It's it's asking if there are executive reports uh, available uh, for use by other researchers from coming out of the future SME project. Yes, we have. Yes, there are there are a couple of sort of more simplistic, uh, non-academic type of research uh, reports come out. At the moment, we are at the final stages of finalizing uh, uh, an academic paper on the on the. That, that really describes the theories behind the model, the, the capability, adaptive capability model. Uh, so uh, that will be available in the next, next few, uh, I, I would say next couple of months as a working paper as we will submit in the journal. But if somebody wants an advanced copy of that, I would be happy to send them a copy of it. Just need to email me. Okay, thanks you much. Okay, that's, um, I think we have reached, reached the end of the webinar and thanks, uh, thanks guys for, um, thanks to all the audience for attending the webinar and we hope you got something out of it. And I'd especially like to thank Bill and Numid for their, for their presentations today. Uh, they were very clear and informative and, and certainly taught me a few things. Uh, this is the fourth in a series of webinars that we are hosting, Future SME is hosting this week as part of EU SME week. Uh, there is one for the webinar today uh, in a few, a few hours' time, and there's also one tomorrow. At 4 o'clock this afternoon, uh, Zaren Buckingham will present her experiences of introducing business-related concepts such as Lean or Six Sigma into the curricula of second-level schools in order to prepare students better for life and industry. And at 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, we have a special webinar uh, by the Bank of Ireland describing how they assess the viability of business cases presented to them. Uh, this is a very practical session and a most for any manager expecting to be looking for funding in the near future. So if you're interested uh, in, in signing up for those, again, go to, go to the website that, that you might just uh, identify there, futuresme.eu, and in, on the first page, you can click on the left-hand corner and you can sign up for those, uh, for those webinars. Or, if, or you can also send an email to me and I will send you on information about them. And the email email address is there on the on the final sheet, and uh, the session is now closed. And uh, if you'd like a copy of the presentation from today, uh, please please send me an email, and we'd be glad to supply it. So thank you very much, and goodbye. <laughs>